All right, all right, all right. How is everyone? Everyone knows that we are doing a launch this weekend. Hey, everyone knows that we're doing a launch this weekend. So what's, what's there to expect? What's going on? What's changing? I don't like using the word changing, right? Like what's improving? That's far more accurate than changing because every moment of every day, like for instance, we were interviewed yesterday by um, someone with quite a following. And the greatest compliment to Rhino is that everyone feels free to speak their mind. Everyone offers the most honest advice with no, no concern of will they ruffle Anthony's feathers, right? Oh, hey, will they go ahead and ruffle Rhino Street's ego? Because that doesn't exist. What exists is we understand that we, Rhino Street cannot be what Anthony likes. Rhino Street needs to be where Anthony is a conduit of what the general, of aggregating the general consensus and understanding what each person needs and what each person wants, putting it together to allow everyone to know that you're all a part of it and here it is together. So, I always check my ego at the door. In fact, I even say, hey, my, I even say to myself, check the name at the door. It doesn't say Anthony Cowell's show. It says Rhino Street, right? Um, well, it says Rhino Research LLC, which is our company, and Rhino Street is our project, right? Like our, our everything. Um, it doesn't say Anthony. This is not Anthony's office. This is Rhino's office. And I'm fortunate enough to be in it. Huh. So we actually, so let's, let's talk a little bit, right? As of this weekend, we will send out an email to a very, very large number of people. In fact, 1,062,500, okay. That email includes all of the local, well, the higher ups, right? The ones, so here's the thing, right? Whenever you're emailing a subsector, right? Like we wanna go ahead and email every teacher. Well, you can't actually email every teacher because then every teacher all feels spammed. They all feel special when they read it. And then they find out that teacher, 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 that teacher all got the same exact email except a different name. So they're like, you know, I thought that guy was different, right? So. In doing so, when we say we're we're emailing the local enforce uh, local uh, law enforcement. We don't mean every cadet, every detective, every police officer, every beat walker. No, it's a select number, mostly done by random, plus the higher ups, right? So for police officer, uh, you have your lieutenants, your commanders, and then your then your rank and file. With that being said, whenever you're looking at rank and file, one would say, Anthony, you know what? You only want to go for the decision makers. No. You see, the decision makers are so busy making decisions. It is the rank and file, and even those that are considered rookies, the ones that are just new to it, that are just trying to find their way. They're looking to make their mark. They're the ones that are far more receptive to a new idea than the ones that have only been that have only seen success over the last 20 years with their existing idea. It's like when you go to uh, someone from a previous generation, right? So the older folk in our country don't exactly all have Facebook and don't exactly have all of the different cool software, right? So if you said to your great grandfather and said, hey, listen, I love Snapchat. You should get on Snapchat. He's like, what's a Snapchat? Well, you could go ahead and send videos to the people that you love and just say hello. Why do I need that? In, implicit in the conversation is the gentleman, the great grandfather knows, well, this will be a good value to what I'm doing. But it's also implicit this, it's not only that he doesn't believe that he can understand the software, he has no inclination to change anything he's done because he's done it a certain way for a very long period of time. So in knowing that, well, then you can take a look at the new, the, the rookies, right? Like the, the new police officers, the young uh, teachers, the, the people without a voice per se, because they haven't earned that voice in terms of seniority of any occupation. You could look at them and say, well, they are the best value for us. They are the best opportunity for us. And they're the ones that no one seems to really be targeting because they're not decision makers. Well, guess what? People that aren't decision makers eventually become decision makers. 
There's a reason why many multinational companies target children. They don't believe your seven-year-old son or daughter has money to contribute to them. They believe that maybe over Christmas, they could kind of convince your son or daughter to bother you to buy a certain toy. No, 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 far more insidious, far more long-term investment. They believe your son and daughter with 10 years of indoctrination when they become 17 will become a lifelong customer of said company which is also along the same lines of our marketing efforts. It is implicit that, actually it's, it's explicit that our marketing is we value everyone equally. We just do. Uh, we do not believe that your rank, that your income, that your job, that your title makes you more important or more, more valuable than anybody else. You might be more helpful if we have a particular outcome that you're uniquely designed and equipped to, to do. I do not think you as Dr. Dr. Mike is more valuable of a person than my son Christian. But I do believe that if I need to get it, uh, a surgery, I would choose Dr. Mike over my nine month old son Christian. So in saying so, because we're looking for everyone, because we're a search engine and a search engine who doesn't search, everyone in the world searches, every single person is equally valuable to us. We don't have any specialty. We're not looking for a surgery and we're not looking for a meteorologist, right? We don't care what the weather is over there because the weather is a global thing to us or local where we are, right? So explicit and even implicit in that, is then those that are quite random and those that are say the, uh, the newcomers to any position or occupation, they're actually the most, they're, say, they're the most opportunity to us while also being the least opportunity to others. Because to us, as long as everyone you search, we want to go ahead and, and, and be in front of those that have the open mind to do so. But does that mean that we're going to go ahead and market to only people that are 20 and 25 and 30 years old? No, we're going to market everyone equally because everyone knows you can be 50 and still be in a job that you would get you got into 30 years ago and you're still in the same exact position or you have a, uh, a superior that is younger than you. Everyone in their life feels like... Um, feels like they're still the newcomer to things because the way the system has been set up, and I don't mean system as in like this conspiracy theorist on the outside, but any place you go to, if you ask for a manager, you find that they don't actually, they're not equipped to make decisions. In fact, they have to then talk to their manager to talk to their manager to talk to their manager. Because this society is so run by the largest corporations that there are not they're not, there are not a fair amount of small businesses in which case there would be the, the balance between a manager being a decision maker and a manager being a placeholder. For instance, in a small business, when you go to it and you say, may I speak to your manager, the manager is, is most likely the owner, if not someone that's close to the owner, that the owner delegated to be able to make that decision. If you go to CBS and ask to speak to a manager, you're speaking to an employee that's probably making a dollar or $2 an hour or more simply for being entrusted to turn on and shut off the lights while 10 cameras watch them. They do not have the ability to say, all right, you know what? You have a great zip cream. We're gonna put that on the shelves. No, no, no. You have to speak to his person, to his person, to his person, to his person. So along those lines, Rhino Street was created and was born from the observation that the majority don't actually have decision-making ability. The majority, have been minimized to a number. The majority don't exactly have the pursuit of happiness at their fingertips. Therefore, for us to be able to market to everyone equally and randomly, it is the majority that we're by default, and not by default, but by definition, going to market to the most. They act as the 99.9%, .9%, and that is who we're interested in because those are the ones that are going to be receptive, and those are the ones that are going to be activated and mobilized and empowered to go ahead and spread the message and spread the awareness of who we are. So who are we, right? I get asked that question so many times. Are we an idea? Are we a technology company? Are we a software? Are we a vision? Are we a value? I think we're just a solution. I honestly think, and, and I see that people that are on here, and obviously there's 
there's a lot I'd have to scroll, but I, I see a lot of the same names and anybody that's new, you're going to very quickly realize that Anthony doesn't have a filter and Anthony shares with you what he actually believes, which if you are sensitive, I guess is not a good thing. But even still, if you feel a little, stay a little longer and welcome to an Italian family, right? Not that everyone's Italian, I'm Italian. But um, what was I going to say? What was I going to say? I did all this buildup, right? Um, talking about... I honestly just lost my train of thought. Which really stinks because I really, really built that one up. I'm going to tell you... Oh, duh. Okay. Tell you what I really think. I honestly think Rhino is just a, is a superhero. And I know that sounds like Anthony, okay, you know, it, now you lost. Well, Rhino's not one person. Rhino's not Anthony. Rhino is everyone. I think Rhino, as a conduit of everyone, is a superhero. Because to be a superhero, what are the terms, right? You have to care about your neighbor. You have to be able to identify a villain. You have to be able to sacrifice your day-to-day -day pleasure to be the day-to-day -day protector. You have to go ahead and identify a solution and mobilize others to that. Like, for instance, if you, if you see like a tsunami and you're the superhero against water and you put a force field up against the tsunami coming, you also have to convince everyone, hey, buddy, run, run, run. I can only do this for so long. At some point, like I might be sleepy and the tsunami is going to crush you. Run, run, run. So what is the tsunami that is coming, right? And we've always been able to identify, and I believe, I don't even believe we need much like talk about this, right? I think everybody understands the wealth inequality between the top 1% and the bottom 99, between corporations and small business is not even a conversation. It's just completely absurd. In fact, I believe this year, the average CEO now makes 378 times more than the median employee, not the low employee, the median employee. And I'm sorry, uh, in, in CEOs, they have board of directors. They, there's so much that they have. In fact, they're not even able to make the big decision because they have shareholders too, right? So they have a board of directors that say, hey, listen, 20% uh, of Vanguard and 40% of this say you should do this. And they're like, okay, I guess I'll do this on my golden toilet bowl. And, uh, you know, I would like sushi, not for breakfast. I would like sushi in my office so I could take it and throw it out my window because, you know, why not, right? Like, I want to feed the birds sushi. And the wealth uh, inequality has gotten to a point. And that's, and when you say a point, it's like, to what point, right? Well, how many small businesses have to disappear before you realize that there is no more small business in the nation? How, how, how? extreme does the income disparity have to be until you realize you don't have a decision anymore. You do not have a path anymore. You're simply earning a living to stay alive. You are simply earning a living so you could stay alive. You're simply, you're simply working to earn a living, to stay alive. And then what, what is it that you're earning, right? Well, at some point, the corporations know, okay, well, we need to pay these people that much money so they can stay alive and do the work so that our corporation can grow. So there is a low, there is a minimum that you will ever make. And that's fine, right? Minimum income, bop, 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 bop. But the problem is there's now a maximum because the less people that have any decision-making ability equals the less voice that the lower income have. And when you don't have a voice, I can promise you that the wealth and I'm not talking about wealthy people because wealthy people actually are quite nice. It's just that they don't trust the system. Wealthy people did not get wealthy because they trust government and say, okay, you know what? We're going to contribute a trillion dollars. Please uh, share it uh, equally with uh, the lower income. No, they let their businesses run in a very Adam Smith capitalistic way, which, you know, God bless. They run their businesses to make a profit. So they're not very inclined to say, okay, you know what? We're so wealthy, let's go ahead and lower prices of things. You know, we really don't need to. Well, no, because they're accountable to shareholders. They're wealthy investors that want to return on their investment. If that CEO ever for a second says, you know what, let's earn less money, the shareholders who all have a vote, vote him out and vote someone and they will make more money. You see, the money system is not built on emotion. And it's not to say that these people are, are emotionless. 
It's just what they do is not built on emotion. Government is built on emotion. And when government and, and, and big business are in equilibrium, there is a place for the middle class to live. The problem is that when big business becomes so big that they have the voice, the lower people, not lower, but lower income, don't have a voice, the big business buys government. In fact, government, in the words of, um, what is it, Robin Williams? Uh, God bless Robin Williams that passed. He goes, government should be like NASCAR drivers. They should have stickers all over them and, and talk about who's representing, who, who bought them, who owns them. Oh, over here, I got Philip Morris. Uh, you know, cigarettes don't cause cancer. And the point is, money buys government. And the reason, because government lives a very cushy life. Congressmen make two, three hundred thousand a year. They have vacations. They have they have health care for the rest of their lives. They have health care for their family. And what do they really do? They go out and say, hey, guys, like I represent you. What do you think? Tell me. Then they go back and they say, OK, uh, my community wants to put this through. And then their party, Republican or Democrat, says, well, I get it. Like, go out there and talk. So you're really going to fight for it. But that's not part of our platform. And you can't put it through. Because they're bought and sold, because the higher ups make four or five hundred thousand a year, and more so than that. Like for instance, right? Like you know when you see a government employee, like a like a presidential candidate, have a best selling book, and you're like, oh my god, how did Bernie Sanders write a book that everyone bought? It doesn't work like that. They go ahead to make a best selling book, and then their PAC money, their political action contributions, that people. The money that gets sent over to the politicians, like, oh, donate $5 here, donate $10 here, goes ahead and represents the campaign. So the, 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 the candidate then sells the book to the PAC, to the fund of money. They sell it because they did work and this is something that they, that they made. It's, 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 they're allowed to have a source of income. Like, why wouldn't you? They sell it to the PAC and then they go ahead and take the book and give it out for free because the, the calculation is, or at least their rationale is, everyone donated money to us, therefore we are going to use that money to go ahead and give them a piece of us. And uh, if they're donating money to Bernie Sanders, oh, Bernie Sanders wants to give them something back and it gives them a book, his views, his life, his hardship, and what he's gonna do. Well, what you're missing in that is that he sold each book for like 50 to $70 to the pack. And I'm saying Bernie Sanders because the story came out about him, but everyone does it. This isn't a political conversation. Well, it's not a political party conversation. It's a political party. It is a political conversation. So I'm not singling out Bernie Sanders. In fact, of everyone, I kind of, I kind of appreciate him. I, I don't like his lack of fight, but I think that's just because he's an older gentleman, right? Like his two last campaign, well, I'm not gonna get into it, but I, I appreciate Bernie Sanders. Anyway, the point being, so him selling the book there, now all of a sudden they have money. So how many copies of the book did he make? How much did he sell? Or he or she or whoever? Is that a million dollars of income? So to be a presidential candidate, I'm now having all this income. The point being, when the large businesses say to these political uh, figures and say, hey, listen, we are a drug company and COVID, is, it's a really bad thing. Uh, we're going to create a vaccine, but that vaccine is gonna cost us a lot of money. There's a lot of R&D that go into this. Well, if somebody else creates a vaccine before us, now all of a sudden all the money that we put into it means nothing. And that's, that's wrong because we are doing the will of the people. This, this, this COVID needs to go and we're gonna go ahead and solve it. So if you want that to happen, well, we're gonna have to spend money over there, meaning you're going to have to either buy up our full supply at this price and put it on contract right now, or if someone else comes out with a better one, you're going to have to compensate us for what we spent and we'll give you the bill, no questions asked. Or you're going to have to lower our tax rate for the next 10 years and allow us to repatriate funds from overseas back home at a tax-free rate for the next five years. All of those things are worthy of debate. Like, wait a second, are you getting over from me? Are you using COVID to go ahead and get tax incentives that far exceed the amount COVID would ever do because you make 50 billion a year, and if you get 10% better tax, that's 5 billion to you, how much? The pharmaceutical company says, whoa, 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 whoa. Before you ask all those questions, who put you in office? Who contributed how much money to your campaign? Who went ahead and allowed you to do all those good ads about you and went ahead and did all those bad ads on the other people? If you go ahead and ask me this question again, we will do the same for your opponent next 
next go around and you will be out of office so quick. Do you like your 400,000? Poof, you'll be on the unemployment line like everyone else and you'll never be in our industry because we'll blackboard you. The point being, that's kind of like a really, really, uh, you know, gunpoint thing to do. The point of all this being, like I said, when government and big business are complementary, like they're in balance, they check each other fine. But when big business is so large that they can go ahead and own government, you now have a fascism where government and big business are in partnership. Over who? All of the lower income people that have no voice. So what do you call that? I call it like slavery. Like, like, and, and not to go ahead and conjure up the imagery of what we know our, our nation's original sin to be. But if you're talking about just someone that's subservient to someone else and doesn't really have a decision and is told what to do, I kind of like indentured servitude, is that more appropriate? And the point is, when you get to there, how do you solve anything? You don't, you're there. You have to wait for like an art, you have to wait for like a physical revolution um, to go ahead and get out of that because you have no more control. You have no more say, you have no more nothing. You have no more money, you have, you have nothing. So when I say what is Rhino, when I say a superhero, it's because we've identified the solution to go ahead and make sure that doesn't happen. We've identified the solution that allows big corporations to go down in money and small business to go up in money so that there's a fair balance in the employment spectrum, which means there's a fair balance in the political spectrum because people have a voice and government and, and politicians can't just simply say, hey, guys, I'm going to do this and then walk away because enough people have a voice. They go, wait a second. That person said they were going to do that. They didn't work. They didn't going to do that. Therefore, we're voting them out. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? OK, great. We have an education. We have a family. Where are reasonable adults? We can do that. See. The answer to 99 of 100 questions isn't money. The answer to 100 of 100 questions is money. It just is. And it's not that money is, oh my God, money can buy anything. No, money equals your standard of living. Your standard of living equals what can you eat. Your standard of living equals what kind of exercise can you get. Your standard of living equals what kind of stress do you live with. Your standard of living, what kind of education, what kind of opportunity do you have. All of those things over the course of your life allow you to be in a position to make the best decision whenever you have the opportunity to make those decisions. And it is that that equals a culture. So how do we go ahead and say, you know what, how do we solve this? Well, what we've always identified was a search engine. It's a seemingly most silly, innocuous thing, a search engine. But what, you, what one must understand is that all these search engines that are in existence, and I'm going to say Google, and it's not because I'm going at Google but they own 95% of the market, so Google, right? And before I say anything, I love Google. I use Google all the time. I believe Google is the, one of the best companies in the entire world. I do not believe they're the best company in the entire world for everything. That's a difference. I believe what they do, they're the best at. But I also believe that in a vacuum, they are by default what is used for something they're not supposed to be used for. And I'll explain. So when you're a local business or when you're a local anyone, like when you're a person, right? Like I'm a person. Okay, I'm a person, I just checked. When you're a person, you go and you search things. All right, uh, I wanna get new shoes, right? Beep, 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 shoes. Nike, Adidas, Reebok. Wow, they look cool. All right, let me click them. Okay, what just happened? I'll tell you what happened. See, here's the thing. It's like a magician. You, you don't see what just happened, but what happens is the answer to everything. It is everything. Because Google, and not just Google, right? Google, uh, AOL search, I think they sell the search, MSN, uh, um, uh, all of those, right? Like, uh, like Bing, they're all for profit, right? They're owned by Wall Street companies. And I say Wall Street companies, Companies because Google is a stock on Wall Street. Investors own Google on Wall Street. They're a Wall Street company. Did everyone follow that calculation? Bing is owned by Microsoft. Do the same calculation. Yahoo is owned. Do the same calculation. MSN is owned. Do the same calculation. Hey, well, right? You get it by now. Okay. These companies need and they are in business to make money, to make profit to their investors who invest in them, right? On Wall Street. Therefore, they have a business model that creates profit, creates money. They go ahead and say, wow, look at all these people. They're searching for stuff. Okay, that's cool. Now, if, they, if we could just bring them to search on our site, we can then sell their search results. What do you mean? 
Well, Nike will pay us X amount of dollars that if every time someone types in shoe, that we put up the Nike website. Oh, wow, that makes sense. Nike sells shoes, people wanna buy shoes, let's put them together. Well, Nike will, but so will Reebok, so will Adidas. Well, I think you could do that with everything. Gee golly, that's a good idea. So that's the business model of search engines. What's it on the other side though? So you as the user, you put in shoes and you're like, oh, cool, Nike shoes, they're so cool. I love them, I love them, I love them. Look at the swish, look at the swish, look at the swish. And you go ahead and you buy them. What, so what happened? You think to yourself, wow, Anthony, you're absolutely crazy because that sounds fantastic. That sounds so good. The person that wanted to buy shoes got the shoes with the swish. The company that sells the shoe with the swish got to sell the shoe. The company that brought you together got a little piece of it, right? They played Cupid, they played middleman. We always take care of that guy, so what's the problem? That's what makes it so perfect. That's why Rhino Street exists because nobody sees a problem with that or no one's able to see a problem with that or no one's able to solve that problem. Because when Mr. Jones, the user, sees the Nike shoe, what are they not seeing? It's like the barkless dog in um, Sherlock Holmes. It's not so much what you see, but what don't you see? Like for instance, in Sherlock Holmes, a robber, you know, they said a robber came into the house but they didn't hear the dog bark. Well, how can a robber come into the house and the dog not bark? The absence of the bark proved that a robber did not come in the house. Same thing with this. The absence of what you see is proof why you believe it to be okay. So I'm the user, I go to the search engine and I search and I get Nike shoe. What didn't happen? I didn't see loose shoes down the block. I didn't see any of my own community's uh, resources, their stores. So what happens to my community, small businesses that sell shoes? Poof. They disappear because they are not getting the traffic from their own community. A small business by default, by definition, is a business that goes ahead and serves its community. Without the community, hey buddy, without the support, <laughs> I love you, without the support from the community, the small business doesn't exist, okay? Let's take it a step further. What happens to the shoe store that wants to be in business? Well, they do their research, right? Like, okay, my town has 50,000 people. Where do they buy shoes from? The majority buy them from Amazon, the majority buy them from Google. Okay, they never open up the store because they realize that if they open up the store, they will not have any business because the business is already going somewhere else. So, so let's take a step at what's actually happening though, right? Like, so Wall Street is in your home is what's happening. Because Google or Yahoo or Bing or whatever, they're in your home, that when you search something, they are buying your sales away from your community. So Nike, who pays Google to go ahead and buy shoe sales, or shoe searches, Google sends that search, uh, the first result to be Nike, the money is siphoned out of your community via Wall Street. Wall Street is in your home siphoning money from your community. Do the calculation, I'm not making this up, I just, I just illustrated it. So what happens then? Well, when somebody buys shoes from Lou's Shoes, which I love that name, by the way. Like, I need to see a Lou's Shoes one day. But when someone buys a shoe from Lou's Shoes, Lou, the owner, makes the money. Now, that shoe has how much it costs in overhead, in terms of labor, in terms of, and there's not a marketing overhead because he doesn't need to market it. You know, he puts up a flyer somewhere. It's this community. People, word of mouth. Oh, Lou's Shoes, he's been there for four generations. Oh, he's such a sweet old man. In fact, he gave my mother jelly beans and he gives me the same jelly. That's who Lou is, right? That's Lou's Shoes. So when he goes ahead and sells a shoe, the money goes into the till, to the register. That money then goes ahead and covers the cost to make the shoe. And Lou probably makes it himself or he has like a master shoe smith that's making them, right? They're making the shoes. And then the rest go to labor and to overhead, right? Like his employees, uh, to the electricity, 
to the rent or mortgage of the establishment. And then what's the rest go to? The rest go to Lou's bank account. That's profit for his business. Now, what does Lou do with that profit? Do you think Lou then goes to China and eats like rice all day? Do you think he goes to Indonesia and eats whatever they eat? Do you think he goes to Russia and drinks vodka all day? I don't think so. Lou lives in his community. So Lou might go see a movie. Lou might go to another store. Lou might go take Mrs. Lou out for a nice night on the town and some really, really great dinner. Probably chicken pot pie because why not, right? That money then goes to those establishments. Those establishments have the same infrastructure that Lou has. They have an owner, they have labor, they have overhead. But what happened to the money that you used to buy the shoe? It stays in your community. What happens to the money that, you, that goes ahead and buys the Nike shoe? It leaves the community and goes to Wall Street shareholders because Nike is a Wall Street owned company that has a huge budget because they make profits because the profits they make, they're able to siphon from your community. So let me give you a little number. By 2024, the average county in this nation, and county being a collection of towns, like I live in Monmouth County, that's Freehold, Tinton Falls, blah, blah, blah. Um, the average county in this nation will lose $100 million per year due to sales being siphoned out of their county. Now, as of today, it's 87 million. So I'm not giving you a number like, oh, wait, by 2024. No, I'm saying 2024 because 100 million is a big round number. You want to know what to say? It's 84 million, right? Next year, it's going to be 94 million. Those are the numbers. Then it goes to 100 million. Now, internet commerce is growing at 30% a year. Small businesses decreasing at 20% a year. So at what point do small businesses get so small and big businesses get so large that it doesn't exist anymore, the disparity doesn't exist? That's the superhero that Rhino Street is. So let me get into what Rhino Street is because apparently I could talk about it all day. It's now 2.33, I do wanna be done by three and I believe I could be. But I also believe that could be done by 2.30. So I'm already like 33 minutes strong. No, three minutes strong. So Rhino Street is the world's first local search engine. Rhino Street results are all opt-ins. So the way Google and all those other search engines do is they, they, they go ahead and they comb the internet. And if you're a website, you're a search engine, which is really great. They're able to show you all the sites on the internet. I think they're phenomenal. If you want to go ahead and search chicken chop, chicken pot pie recipes or your favorite music lyrics or the, 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 the weather tomorrow, great. They know where weather.com is. They know how to do everything quite easily. That's really fantastic. Good for them. Why are people texting? There are people texting me that are actually on this call. Do you think I'm gonna answer your phone? I don't think so. So they're able to do that, but what doesn't it do well? Well, let's go back to the business model. They're a for-profit company, which means their, their profit comes from revenue. Well, they have to sell something to get revenue. So they sell search results, which is they're saying to you, hey, listen, we'll make you number one if someone searches this. We'll make you number one if someone searches this. Could they ever do that on a community? Well, they couldn't because there's not enough in the community to ever do that. Wall Street companies have large budgets. They have million and billionaire investors. Lou's Shoes is fourth generation. They make enough to keep them alive and, and be a pillar of the community and, and, and have a smile and to be happy. Therefore, you would never make enough money in a community by selling ads. You just couldn't do it. You cannot say, all right, Lou's, um, I'll make you the first result if someone searches shoes. And then Lou says, there's like three shoe, shoe businesses in this whole neighborhood. How many shoe businesses do you think are going to be in this neighborhood? I don't need to pay you to be the first. If someone thinks someone else is better, God bless. There's three of us. So the search engine says, well, Lou's right. We better make this quite global. And then at that point, that's when the siphoning begins. So to make a local uh, search engine, how can you do it? You couldn't if you were doing a profit model. So Rhino Street is nonprofit. We just, we don't sell anything. This is how, and because all the search results are opt-ins, everyone that's there wants to be there, which means everyone that's there is looking to go ahead and spread awareness of why they're there. Because if you think about it, would, and would Lou say, oh yeah, go on Google and type in Lou's shoes, you'll find me. No, like, what, on the 57th page? 
But Lou would say, yeah, go and run a shoot and search me. I'm right there. And where will Lou be? If you're within 20 miles of Lou, he will be the number one result for Lou shoes. I don't think there's another Lou shoes in, in Rhino shoe, right? First town. If there's two Lou shoes in the same 20 mile uh, community, well, then Lou has like a, an evil twin, right? So to be, so when you search Rhino Street, you will only get people that opt in. You will only get the search results of those that are calculated within 20 miles of your immediate location. Therefore, the definition of local business is the 20 miles around you. That is local to you. And we pick 20 miles because no matter where you are in the United States, within 13 miles is a hospital. So we believe in 20 miles, you should find a hospital plus other cool stuff, right? Not that the hospital's cool, but it's kind of cool, right? But then lastly, the most important point, all Wall Street companies are disqualified. And it's easy to say, well, Ann, you say that now, but no. I know the value of Rhino Street. If we let Wall Street companies on, there is no more value of Rhino Street. So Wall Street companies are not allowed on Rhino Street. Does that make sense? So Google does really good stuff. They're the best Wall Street search engine that Wall Street could buy. And that's not a, 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 con, that's not a, a, a condemnation. I use Google every day. I want everyone to use Google every day. I want them to use Rhino Street first. Because when you search for anything, you should search your community first. You should search your families first. You should search your neighbor first. You should go to a search engine where you see the pictures and you know the, you know the search results. And I was on this interview yesterday and the gentleman said to me, Anthony, but what's like the real differentiating factor? And I said to him, I go, when Apple and Steve Jobs came out with the iPhone, he invented something that no one knew. It did not exist. I go, what Rhino Street's doing is the same exact thing. We're renting something that does not exist. I go, I can't even describe to you the experience that you're going to have because you don't know how to compare it. But what if you went on a search engine and you typed in something and the search results were all people that you knew. In fact, every one of the search results you knew or you knew someone that knew that person or they were your neighbor or that you went to school with them or you walked in with them. And there was pictures of each one of them. The search result is the picture of the person, the name of the business by the name of the person. So Rhino Street by Anthony Kalishow. You would look at it and say, Rhino Street, I know that guy. Oh, I know that guy. Let's see what it is. A little description of what we're doing. And the person that owns that business has complete discretion over changing that business description at any will that they would like because they own their search results. How about ever going on a search engine when you see everyone you know? It would, it, it would be a sensation, an experience that you were never, uh, you were never intended to even know how it felt because you have been so primed to only search from absolute strangers. Think about what you actually do all day. You go on a search engine and you and you click a result that was told would be good for you. It has a cool, catchy name. It has a pretty site. You believe what they are. You go in and put your credit card in. You send it not knowing where it's going to go. And that's what you're happy with. You would never tell your kid to go down a, an alley and go up to the first person that says they have a shoe for them and give them their credit card to write down the numbers. It just wouldn't happen. But yet you do it every day. But it's because you don't have an alternative. There is no alternative to what we do until now. So imagine saying, okay, I want to get a shoe and you go into Rhino Street and you type in shoes and Lou's shoes comes up and you're like, oh my God, Lou, I love that guy. That's my best friend's father growing up in high school. Let me take a look at what he's got. Immediately and implicitly in what you're doing, you're now looking for a reason to buy from Lou rather than looking for a reason not to. Therefore, if Lou's shoes are 5% more than Nike, that's not going to stop you. You almost feel obligated because you know him. You know that he's a sweet person. You want to support him. You want to send your money to your community. Oh, hey, Rick. That's the difference. Meaning when people say, well, we're in local small businesses. We can't compete with the big boys because, uh, you know, because of, of money, right? Like we can't sell it for the same amount they can. Of course you can't. They go ahead and take over the supply chain from China. They buy bazillions and bazillions of something, and then they go ahead and scale it across the entire country. I can promise you, if you buy 100 of something, it's going to be cheaper than if you buy 10 of it. And that's what they grow their business on. But the point is, while they're doing it, you're getting smush, 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 smush. They're getting larger and larger and larger. And that tsunami is going to come over probably in like a year or two from now. So what does Rhino Street do? Well, it allows every small business in town to actually be supported by those in their town that believe with, with the following sentence. Would they prefer to buy from their local community versus a Wall Street company? 
if you say the answer is yes, it allows your local business to go ahead and be introduced and be in front of those people. I would say the answer to that is 10 out of 10, yes. In fact, I've done the math and I have yet to find someone, not a single person that said to me, Anthony, I don't care about my local business. I will buy the cheapest thing from China. It could be the biggest sweatshop. I don't care. Um, if I met that person, I wouldn't be friends with them. I would actually judge them. I would say, you know what? You and I can't even speak anymore because I can't think of something more evil than that. And I just, I just don't think that person exists. And if they do, they're such a low minority that it, it's not going. So maybe not at every, not 10 out of 10 people, but 9.999 people go ahead and prefer to buy from local than, um, than corporations. So the gentleman that was interviewing me yesterday said to me, Anthony, well, everyone for the entire history of the world has said they prefer to buy local and no one seemed to be able to crack the code of how to get them to do it, how you can actually allow them to mobilize it. In the safety and sanctity of their own home, they can do whatever they want. I said, I know that. Search engines though, because when you type in google.com, everything you do from that point forward is buying from corporations. And you can find small businesses, don't get me wrong, there are some, but you have to find them. Like they're the seventh listing or you know, the third page, whatever. The second you go on google.com, that happens. Conversely, the second you go on rhinostreet.com, everything from that point forward is local business. It's pure, it's local business from that point forward. So I said to the gentleman interviewing me yesterday, and I said, well, I can offer everyone that same experience from the safety and sanctity of their own home by doing the same exact thing, but in simply instead of using this toothpaste, they use this toothpaste, right? You can brush your teeth, but instead of using that toothpaste, just use this one. And in fact, if you use this toothpaste and it's empty, then use that one. If we can go ahead and spread the message, we love Google, but we use Rhino Street first, then what are we talking about here? Well, then at that point, the numbers start really stacking. Because if you could say, 99.999% of people would choose to buy from local business. And you could go ahead and offer a solution that is simple and easy and they already know how to do. They just simply need to be aware of it. Then what are you doing? Well, then by default, by definition, what you're doing is you're raising small business, you're supporting small business, you're supporting community. And at the same time, you're bringing down corporations because instead of me buying a t-shirt from Walmart, I could buy it from here. Instead of me buying a shoe from Nike, I could buy it here, which means the marginal dollar, and in fact, the tsunami of money goes to Main Street, while the money that had been going to Wall Street comes down to make up for this. Like money is transferred over. So Rhino Street can be, and by definition and by design, is the largest transference of money from Wall Street that the world has yet and will ever see. Okay. Well, implicit in that, there's a lot of things that need to be done. Well, Anthony, you can have the best idea in the world. And in fact, I'll be the one to say it, so don't say it too. Anthony, you can have the best idea in the world, but if you do not know how to execute it, then you don't have the proper execution, you don't have the proper team, you don't have the proper vision, you don't have the proper bop, 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 it'll never work. You can have the cure for cancer, but if you don't know anyone with cancer, it means nothing, which I do understand. And God bless anyone that has that awful disease, right? Because I would never just use it to make a point without saying that, right? It's not trivial. The point of the story is, well, what is our execution? So, so far we've welcomed everyone in and we've done no marketing and we're up to 2,200 people in Rhino that own Rhino Coin. And I'll explain what Rhino Coin is, but that are full participants that come onto these lives. We have a lot right now, always get a better, oh my God, you're amazing. Um, Every, everyone, uh, bringing everyone in, always doing something better, always improving the product. And then we have our launch this weekend. Our launch this weekend will be a really, really nicely worded email um, that will welcome everyone. We know who we're sending it to, right? Like I said, that million list, we know who each person is. That email will have their first name, last name, what they do, where they do it, what, why they're doing it, and what Rhino Street is and how they can help solve it, right? How they can be a part of it. That email, depending on where the person is located, is going to offer a link in the email that's going to send them to a subdomain. Now, what a subdomain is, you must know what a domain is. A domain for us is rhinostreet.com, right? That's our domain. What our subdomain is, blah, 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 dot rhinostreet.com. Now, we own 420 of them. That blah, blah, blah is the 420 cities in the United States that all have a population of 50,000 or higher. So, let's say Eugene, Oregon, because the gentleman that interviewed me yesterday was from Eugene, Oregon, and I Absolutely adore him. He's amazing. In fact, 
I don't know if many people say this, but somebody that on an interview that pushes back at me as many times as he did, I love it. In fact, I'm going to show you the website. We have two huge changes, upgrades, right? Um, directly from him because he allowed thought to uh, get going in my head. And I'll show it to you. And I have 14 minutes, so bear with me. Um, so let's say, for instance, we send this email to this gentleman, and he's from Eugene, Oregon, which he is. And the link in it is eugene.rhinostreet.com. Now, what is eugene.rhinostreet.com? Eugene stands for Eugene, Oregon. So someone from Eugene, Oregon will see Eugene and know exactly what it is. And it's going to bring them to our subdomain, eugene.rhinostreet.com. That subdomain has our commercial front and center right in the middle, beautifully done, which we did, we did professionally. It took two months in scripting and airing and, and recording. It's very, very good. And then the perimeter of the website is 16 photos uh, aggregated from Eugene, Oregon. How did we do that? Well, we have a team member that goes ahead and goes to the Instagram, goes to the Facebooks, hashtag Eugene, and goes ahead and looks at all the photos that are public photos that people put up. We find the ones that are the most masterful, the most beautiful, the, the, the child driving the car with his dad, and go ahead and, uh, and uh, uh, snip it, and then go ahead and collect it, and then put it on the website. Meaning the person from Eugene, Oregon, that goes to eugene.rhinostreet.com will see the pictures, see their local community, see not pictures of like, they're from New York City in the Eiffel, not the Eiffel Tower, right? Eiffel Tower, no, that's Paris, um, Empire State Building, but it's going to see like thoughtful, caring people that they know, people that, that are not famous, but they're simply just in the photos. And because Instagram and Facebook go ahead and calculate by as many likes what the engaging thing is, the picture with the most likes by definition has the most probability of the most people in that locale knowing who that person is. Do 16 of them, and I promise you the odds are that any one person from that community will at least know one of those pictures and immediately feel at home, see the commercial, and then that website automatically redirects upon the completion of the commercial to our main site, rhinostreet.com. <sighs> rhinostreet.com, and I'm going to show you, we've made it so much simpler so that there's only two calls to action. And the first call to action is in a big green print, what is Rhino Street? In which case, it's a video that I would show you today, but I'm going to re-record it for Friday because I believe I need to make it bigger, better, more powerful. Not longer, just two minutes, but bigger, better, more powerful. Upon someone completing that video, they're going to know everything about Rhino Street. Imagine this last 48 was brought down to two minutes. That's what that video will look like. Plus some more stuff I haven't talked about yet. So if you believe that's impossible, I agree with you, but I'm going to do it anyway because the impossible is not where I stop. It's where I start. On the top left corner, there'll be what one of our team members calls a hamburger menu. And he talks about hamburgers all the time. And he's obsessed with hamburger menus. And I told him we were never going to have a hamburger menu. And at that point in time, I knew we were going to have a hamburger menu, right? So it's a hamburger menu that says join. As you pull it down, it will have join what? Join here. Very simple. I want to join, join here. Cool. Then it's going to have who's Rhino Street. And we have three videos that describe who we are. It's going to say, get in touch with us. We have three ways to get in touch with us. That's it. Nice, beautiful, simple. Because we have a corporate partnership with Salesforce, once you join now, that's where all the magic happens. So you join now and then you're gonna get this email and then depending on what you do, you'll get this email and depending how long it takes to do that, you'll get this email. Blah, 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 blah. You're going to go ahead and make sure, we're going to make sure that not only are you a part of everything, that you're nurtured, that you're... Uh, yes, so actually two things, um, Mike, uh, two things. One, if you go ahead and decline, um, decline uh, permission for your location, it then prompts you to put in a zip code. You can put in any zip code in the entire world, which is the second thing I'm going to say, and you'll be able to search that location. And secondly, everyone in Rhino Street has access. Anthony, we want to be a part of Rhino Street, but we do not live in America. Can you go ahead and, and, and recode and extend the zip code further so that we can use it all across the world? And I challenge my team to do so, and we are able to do it now. The back end is done. The front end just needs to be completed. The zip code thing, the zip code portion that you see only allows five digit character, five digit characters, right? Whatever, five digit numbers, which means for us to go ahead and uh, 
successfully allow uh, any zip code. Some zip codes have letters in it. Some zip codes are more than 65 characters, some are less, right? So the front end we need to go ahead and complete, which will be done by tomorrow because that's simple stuff. I say simple, I'm not doing it, but my team is really, really smart and I believe it's simple for them. Um, yeah, I just, they're really good. Um, so we'll have that done by today, which means anyone from around the world can use a zip code function and it will calculate 20 miles from your zip code anywhere there is. Pop, pop, pop. Anyway, so upon the person getting in, we're going to make sure that they're absolutely nurtured and everything is taken care of. We're going to offer them plenty and plenty and plenty and plenty of opportunities to recommend and bring their favorite businesses along, their friends along, because obviously what you can tell from this point is there's a lot of education that goes into this. And that's unfortunate. But unfortunately, when you invent something, you have to go ahead and educate people what it is you're inventing. What is the problem that you're solving? What is the solution? Has it solved? And has it helped everyone? So I'm going to have to find a way to make this a little bit shorter, but so be it. Now we get to the coin. Now the coin is interesting. So the coin for as long as we've done this, it's always been Rhino coin, it's Rhino payment, and I feel like that doesn't do us justice. So there is a saying in, in marketing, speak past the sale. Like for instance, if you and I are playing chess, for me to allow you to really think I'm gonna, that I know I'm gonna beat you, I would say, so I know loser pays when we go for lunch, I wanna go to Chinese. And it's like, bro, you, you didn't win. No, no, I know, but when we're done, I, I wanna to go to Chinese. And it's like, I'm already telling you, I know I'm gonna beat you, I'm speaking past the sale. It's like when you go to a car dealership and they look at, you're looking at the car and they go, when you get this car, you, you have to get the seats all right inside. It is beautiful. I'll go ahead and bring you to that department right when we're done with the paperwork. I didn't say I was gonna buy the car, but now you have me envisioning what the car's gonna look like. And you, I am now prone or at least vulnerable to following you along this pathway. It's called speaking past the sale. And the reason I mention that is because when we talk about coin, even I'm uncomfortable with it. I don't know anything about Bitcoin. Like I don't, I would never in a million years go ahead and, and, and be like, all right, I'm, I'm gonna buy this and coin and sell it. I, I, just, I don't have a trust in it. I don't know it. I, I just don't. Our coin system is so different than any coin system because our coin system is in each, is on is opted in by the business and consumers of Rhino Street. And it allows each member to go ahead and transact in the coin. What do I mean by that? So if I'm purchasing something on Rhino Street for $10 and the, uh, the gentleman I'm purchasing or the lady that I'm purchasing it from opted into the Rhino payment system, then the $10 I'm sending them in transit, while in transit, it purchases $10 of the coin and sells $10 of the coin and gives them $10. The purpose of it is that the volume and the transactions allow it to become an investable asset because it has such volume and because it measures the growth of the platform. The more people that buy and sell, the more coin that gets bought and sold in a day, which equals the coin now equals the value of the platform because the coin represents the value of the platform because everyone that does sales on the platform does it in the coin, right? So in, a, in effort to go ahead and not only fund our project, but to also go ahead and distribute back the value that everyone deserves because the, the platform's worth nothing without you. Google's worth nothing with no searches. Facebook's worth nothing without any users. You think it's a free platform, but it's not. You are, you are the engine of it. You're the product they're selling. Without you, everything's worth zero. And I thought to myself, well, that's, that's so yucky. How do we build something that goes ahead and distributes that value to everyone that's a part of it? That's where the coin idea came from because we're turning the value of the coin, we're turning the coin into an investable asset that actually is backed by real stuff. The transactions are real. They buy and sell the coin organically. Therefore, then we, by distributing the coin to everyone and creating a value for the coin that's commensurate with the platform, we're then able to say, you are valuable. The, the, everything that you do on this platform, you're going to earn back because you own the coin and the coin has a value that's commensurate with the platform. Therefore, if the platform is the entire small business of the entire globe, well, guess what? We're able to return you your entire value that's been taken from you. We're superheroes, we're able to do that for you. Now, I'd have to explain that whole back half of the part for people to say, because I bet you right now you're like, Anthony, yeah, I would never do a coin thing. Like, exactly. Even, even Anthony thinks coins are crazy and I'm gonna, yeah. 
And then after I explain it, you're like, oh, yeah, why wouldn't I do that? So the point is, I need to talk past the coin thing because at the end of the, once it's explained, everyone understands what it actually is. Yeah, it's a coin only because coin is what's, what's readily available for us to go ahead and represent how we're doing this. If it was jelly beans or if it was like uh, particles, we would do that. It's just the coin allows this to happen. So it's rhino retirement. What do I mean? Well, if, if you go ahead and transact and say one penny out of every dollar that you earn, so say for instance, that $10 I send you, well, in transit, only $9.90 gets to you. In cash, you let 10 cents goes to your Rhino wallet in Rhino coin. Well, what effectively happened? 10 cents of Rhino coin got taken off the market. The point is when you go ahead and collect that 10 cents of Rhino coin, what are you gonna do with it? Oh my God, 10 cents of Rhino coin, I need that money to live, let me go ahead and sell it. No, you're gonna say, well, that's a trivial amount in my life. And I'm not saying 10 cents is trivial for everyone, I'm saying 10 cents is trivial to you because it's 1% of the $10 you just earned. So it's, it's all rational and in ration, in what's the word? In whatever, it's, it's in ration, <laughs> that's, that's, that's not it, it's, it's in whatever, it's in percentage for the person that's, that's doing it. So that person is going to say, uh, and this is um, behavioral economics, because again, that's my background, I know this, that person's gonna say, all right, well, that 10 cents up, you know what, I use Rhino Street. I like the message, but I like Anthony, I like what we're doing here. If it works, cool, I'm just gonna leave it there, right? Because it's such a trivial amount, and because the person that's on it already went through all this, so they believe in the platform, they're buying and selling on the platform, they're listed on the platform, they're the person that says they want to do that. Well, what happens when you take something off the market? You decrease the supply. What happens when you bring, uh, when, you, when you do transactions? Well, here's, here's, the, here's the part of Rhino Street that makes us different, makes us probably going to be the biggest company in the entire world. The supply of Rhino coin is only 1 billion. And I know what you're saying, 1 billion ant, that's a lot. No, it's not. It's only 1 billion. But the demand for Rhino coin, oh, Justin, you're the best. The demand for Rhino coin is actually infinite. Let me explain. You are not the buyer of Rhino coin. You're the owner. Your sales are the buyers and your sales are infinite. Not you one person, but the collection of population their lives are infinite, not any one individual, but unless you think a meteor is coming and going to kill everyone, the population will continue reproducing. Well, and the reproduction rate's going down. Yeah, then go to zero, right? The population of the participants is always going to be in existence. People are always going to need to buy something. Therefore, if you take 10 cents supply off the market of 1 billion for that one transaction, how many transactions do you do? How many transactions do you do with that person, with that person, with that person, with that person? Very quickly, you realize that the coin, first of all, when you take supply off the market and demand stays level, if not increases, the value of the coin goes up. So if you take supply off the market and demand stays even, if not goes up, which by the way, what demand does Rhino Street have? We have zero. We haven't launched yet. So our market is 99.9% .9 of the population. Well, 99, well yeah because that's actually the real statistic between small business and corporations, 99.9 .9 is small business. So if our market is 99.9% .9 and we have zero of it, and like we explained before, we are inventing the solution. So we have zero competition. We are going to grow our market share by simply picking our nose and not, not pressing the red button. So if we're taking supply off the market and our demand is growing, then the coin goes up in value um, commensurate, right? Uh, along this in parallel. If a coin goes up in value, and I hate saying coin because it's it's not like a coin that's backed by nothing. It's, it's backed by the sales. The sales are the buyers. So if a coin continues to go up every single day because the demand is going up every day and the supply is going down every day, at what point does it become a self-fulfilling prophecy where everyone's saying, wait a second, this coin, which I see going up every day because it's on all the public exchanges and it has that story behind it. And this is those people, and this is what they're doing. And I could be a part of it 
by simply just opting in by, by and can you list my business and all of my business transactions will add to the to the to to the purchasing of the coin which means it'll add to the coin going up which means i'm going to go ahead and collect the coin plus i'm getting coin every month from rhino to be a participant when does that become a critical mass because i'll tell you something when i see a platform that uh, champions and rescues small business and lower income spectrum and when i see a platform that's completely free that is not looking to sell me anything and i see a platform that's not only free but they're giving me money and i see a platform that was able to identify a solution that goes ahead and captures and secures a value population and gives it back to me as a participant in that population why wouldn't i in fact i would have to look for reasons not to do it um so i'm already at 301 I wanted to get into what are, I'll, I'll do it. I'll send you an email Saturday on this, right? So this whole week, as you know, my biggest, well, <laughs> just doing a big launch over here, but outside the launch, I want to go ahead and empower everyone to be a participant in the launch. So we're creating a partnership package. That partnership package has, identifies the city that you live in and identifies four things, the top local newspaper, the top local government officials, the top local radio station, the top local TV station. In each one of those identifications, we went ahead and have five to 10 of the, of the decision makers in those locales, right? So the newspaper, we have the emails to the editor, to the publisher, to the community columnist. For local government, we have the email to the mayor, to the deputy mayor, to the executive assistant to the mayor. For the local radio, we do have the email to the tel uh, to the radio personnel, the, the on-air, uh, the production department, the people that go ahead and pick the content, and same thing for local TV. We have the Twitters, we have all of this. Meaning for the people that get into Rhino Street that understand this idea lives and dies on you. I can't do it, I made it, here we are. The only way that this lives is if everyone goes ahead and spreads the awareness, because if you go on a search engine that doesn't have a search result, we're dead, right? Like, am I making sense here? Therefore, if you go on a search engine that nobody knows about or nobody agrees with, or nobody is, 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 is influenced or persuaded to participate, we're dead. But alternatively, Go ahead and share the awareness. If you go ahead and write to the editor and get them to be in the newspaper and volunteer Anthony and Rhino Street to go ahead and be an exclusive interview. If you could go ahead and write to the governor and say, hey, listen, and hey, Mr. Mayor, you operate on tax receipts, right? Let's go ahead and increase local tax revenue. We have a solution. Radio, TV, hey, you're just fighting, you're just, you're just, you're just starting in this uh, industry. Do you want a good story? Do you want a good this? If we could have a hundred people from Eugene, Oregon emailing the mayor if or writing you know what, i gotta do physical mail too because everyone loves physical mail if we can have a hundred people um emailing and writing physical mail and tweeting the the editor to the local newspaper at what point does that person respond back and say okay you're a you're a um you're a community member in this locale you and like a hundred other of your neighbors of the locale that we are the newspaper to or writing us about this thing called Rhino Street. It would behoove us at the very least to write a story about Rhino Street, seemingly because everyone's writing us about it. The point is when you have a voice, you get a response. Like for instance, if everyone in town ABC says, hey, we want a blue park bench, guess what? There's a blue park bench. If everyone in town ABC wants a blue park bench and nobody says they want a blue park bench, except for like five people in town, guess what happens? They do not get a blue park bench. So when people are talking about, oh, we have it so bad, you know, big business is beating us up, blah, 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 you're right. But what are you doing about it? Yes, 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 Monica. So unfortunately, because I went like way overboard, it's 305, and I really, really promised to do three. I have all of that, but I'm still doing it. By Friday, I'm going to have a complete partnership package. It's going to come chock full with our website, our videos, our email content. I'm gonna actually craft it for you. 
including a spreadsheet of all the local newspapers, government, radio, TV, with an actual instruction sheet that I'm going to craft as well. Hey, do this first. Upon doing this, check here. Now do this. And also with the art email, uh, email mark, our email automations going forward, once we do our launch, it's going to have constant touch points. I'll always be here every Wednesday. We're going to do it together. But I love that you said that because I've actually built it because people have said that. So thank you for asking for the blue park bench. You will get the blue park bench. Great, I love it. Who doesn't love Monica, by the way? Um, what else I going to do? So actually, you know what? I'm going to let you go with this. So we did, everyone remembers Abigail, who we absolutely love. Um, so we challenged Abigail to go ahead and make us a Rhino retirement video. Now, obviously we scripted it and everything, but that was the challenge. Now this site, what you'll notice is this is new, the world's local search engine search here. Because what I've been told is Anthony, especially the interview yesterday, is this a search bar? I don't know, I don't know. And initially I wanted to like have ego, like how could you not know this is a search bar? But the point is I'm so deep into the project that I know it's a search bar, but fresh eyes maybe don't. So I thanked the gentleman very, very nicely because that's what it takes to be successful. Also, I wanna shorten this and we're shortening it probably by the end of today, if not tomorrow. So this search bar will end here and end here. So this will be centered in it. Also, all of these buttons are going to go into this menu over here. These are gonna disappear all together because they're going to be in the emails. Um, and then this will be our hamburger menu that will open up, which means when you come to the page, all you're going to see is search here and learn how Rhino Street works, which means that this video needs to be the best video of my entire life because this video needs to activate you and motivate you to go ahead and join. So you come to Rhino Street, boom, boom, boom. Simple, easy, sweet. But what I wanna show you, and I'm gonna let you go on this, is Rhino Retirement. So what I just explained to you about the coin system, I wanna better illustrate what I'm talking about. And then we're gonna go. Oh, I'll tell you, I'm sorry. I love that. Huh. Let me say, let me go back to South share. So as I was watching that, I did realize that some of the some of the top got cut off, and that's awesome. 
caption bubble is too big, can't read something. Thank you, Javier. Yeah, I was able to see that as well, which is a bit embarrassing because I'm, I'm just watching it on the site for the first time today. Um, but my team is also on this call, so they already know what I'm going to say. So I promise you they're already on it, but that's what we do together, right? All right, guys, let me give you some initial projections. We believe that we'll have 16, probably around 18,000 join by the end of this weekend, in which case that join is going to then move them over to opting in their businesses or requesting or uh, recommending a business, in which case that recommendation is going to be a two or three day lag, right? Because one email, then the next one. But we do believe at least... 5,000 businesses will be recommended, in which case the value to, or the, the path of value to the coin is that number there. So once you have the businesses on, then we offer them the opt-in system, the payment system, which they incorporate into it. So there will be a lag in terms of what the coin is worth because it trades regularly. The coin is going to be minted by tomorrow. The coin is going to be released uh, August 1st, I believe, the first week of August. By that point, we would have had enough time to test it, make sure all the sales are operating and within it, because the last thing I want to do, and I'm doing this for your protection. I know this sounds crazy, but I'm going to do it and I can't be talked out of it, right? If I go ahead and release all the coin to the individuals today, the coin's going to be worth zero to start because you don't have any of the sales kicking in because the businesses didn't kick in yet. The opt-in system didn't kick in yet. The growth didn't kick in yet. Meaning the coin's value from day one to day 60 is going to exponentially. It's going to pick up everything that's already there. Meaning somebody that owns the coin will look at it on day one and say, it's zero. I can't believe I was such a fool. Bop, bop, bop. And they'll be tempted to say, you know what? Let me just sell it. And when they sell it, no matter how many of they sell it, they're going to A, hate Rhino, and B, more importantly, hate themselves. Because after two or three months, they're going to see the coin shoot off to where it was always projected to go. And they're going to say, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. I was in Rhino for four years and I just went ahead and sold it for zero. I hate myself for doing that. And I'm not willing to allow that to happen to anybody. Anybody that knows me knows when I'm talking about being superhero and rescuing people, it does mean against their own bad, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Even, like, even against their own beliefs. Like for instance, your friend is drunk and wants to drive, you take the keys away, he curses you out, he says thank you the next morning. I'm comfortable being that friend and I appreciate everyone that is that friend. So that is my presentation today. I'm sorry for being 13 minutes over. Um, our first email goes out Saturday. It's coming from Anthony at Rhino Street. I'm finally going to dust off that shiny, beautiful new email. Uh, so please don't spam it, right? Anthony at Rhino Street, I'm telling you now. Um, but I seriously love you all. This has been such a joy. I can't even explain to you the amount of work that goes into it. Um, but it's for moments like this. And we have a long future ahead of us. So just stay excited. Cont Not only stay excited, but I need you to understand when I say this is everyone's, it's not to blow smoke up your butt because I do need you. The work that I need you for is going to start kicking in. I need everyone to be recommending other people. I need everyone to be a conduit. I need everyone to be, um, you know, a megaphone. So when we were saying this is everyone, trust me, I'm not shy to actually, to actually talk to people and, I, and say, you're not living up to your end of the bargain. I need you to, to do better. And I will be right there with you. I, there is nothing. And you can ask anyone on my team, anyone that's ever known me in my life, there's nothing I will ask you to do that I won't do myself. And I will be there with you. But if, if, if our rhinos believe that that was just kind of a cute sentence and they get to sit around and do nothing and just prosper, I can promise you that's not okay. I mean, it's not like I can make you not do it, right? It's, it's do what you want to do. But I want to let you know now that's not in the agreement we made. So I need everyone to participate. So with that said, I love you all. And we're here for you, and Use us. Oh, baby. Um, anyway, love you all. I'll see you next week's live. I'll see you for Saturday's email. Get excited. Um, we're there. Bye, guys.